And I think this raises the point when you think about you know, the adoption of, of many approved drugs, uh, particularly the large number available in the U.S., in terms of you know, referral to major centers, uh, I mean, UVL probably comes top of the list where you'd say that's, that's a group that, where it's essentially clinical trials all the time. Mucosal, acral, you know, kind of intermediate, I suppose, because they can, can respond to available therapies. Jeff, before we jump into uh, you know, kind of the advanced disease context and therapy, I just want to get your quick thoughts on PDL1 testing. I mean, so before we leave this molecular testing paradigm, is that, is that a feature in your practice? Well, PDL1 testing is, of course, an assessment of surface staining, usually by immunohistochemistry, of the ligand for PD1, which is a break on the immune system present on T cells. The problem with PDL1 staining is A, it's a sort of a 1940s assay. Immunohistochemistry was developed probably 70 years ago probably hasn't advanced that much since. It's an inducible marker, meaning it can go up or down depending on the level of T cell infiltrate, level of inflammation within a tumor. Within a tumor in the body, you can actually have heterogeneous staining. So depending on where you stick your needle, you can get one result or another. Within the body of the patient from one tumor to the other, it also may vary. So when you think about it, putting that together, it makes it one of the world's worst potential predictive markers because a predictive marker by its nature should be something that's easily measurable, has a robust, easy to manage test, and is essentially invariant like a BRAF mutation. It's the perfect predictive marker. The problem with PDL1 is I've mentioned all of the pitfalls, and if it would distinguish someone who would get no benefit from PD1 blockade or CTLA4 blockade from those who would, it would be great, but unfortunately, even though we all agree if you're a PDL1 patient, you probably have a higher chance of responding to a PD1 blocking or a PDL1 blocking antibody, the negatives still can benefit. So unfortunately, it hasn't had that much traction in spite of its early promise. I personally don't ever get it on my okay. patients. And I just put in the context of other diseases that are being treated in the community, obviously. And in lung cancer, I think the role of PDL1 staining is, is debatable. I mean, I think people have opinions. In melanoma at the current time, though, there really is, I would have to agree completely with Jeff, there really isn't a role in the clinical space to do the testing. Because if you actually look at the data, the response rate in the PDL1 negative patients to a monotherapy PD-1 inhibitor is still better than what we see with ipilimumab or chemotherapy. So even with the biomarker, you still have the best drug is still just give the drug. And so, but that's probably in an evolving area as we get more agents, as we'll consider, you know, what the most appropriate. And not just treatment. response rate, overall survival. I mean, the nivolumab versus DTIC trial clearly showed those who were PDL one negative had a much higher survival one year and two year overall survival than either DTIC arms, which had PDL one positive or negative. So it's clearly beneficial. Yeah. Um, I mean, one could I hypothesize agree. that in a future environment in which we had prospective randomized data comparing targeted therapy and immunotherapy, that there might be subset analyses there where you could pull out patients. But we're, I mean, we're five years from that. I mean, that's that's still out there. So I don't think in clinical practice that that's an approach that really should be. And PDL one is a blunt tool for inflammatory yeah. tumor. It's a very blunt tool, and we're getting better at trying to, ass trying to assess that. And although you made the comment that immunohistochemistry is old, it doesn't mean it's not good. <laughs> one, one area where, where that we're really pursuing is this multiplex, yeah. which is basically immunohistochemistry, but being able to visually, spatially see how cells are related. And that, that might be something that's you know, more informative about these, when you get a whole tissue section of these inflamed tumors. Heterogeneity, though, is still a problem. Interesting factoid is that I heard a talk last night where a new molecular technique is being pursued of spectroscopy, looking at protein and protein fragments within tumors to assess on a more molecular quantitative basis the expression of something like PDL1. And the assessment showed that in a moderate sized series of tumors, the false positive and negative rates were huge, like 70%, mm -hmm. comparing a more molecular, rigorous, quantitative technique to immunohistochemistry. Mm -hmm. So that's why I made my crack about immunohistochemistry. <laughs> All right. Break, break it up, you two. <laughs>